This video will cover the cranial nerves. So we talked about spinal nerves. Remember there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves and all spinal nerves, remember, are mixed. There are also nerves which come off the brain and these are called cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. You can see them here. Cranial nerves go by both a number and a name. Makes it a little bit harder to learn, but it's not that difficult. In terms of numbering, it starts anterior and goes to posterior. And if they're in a row, it goes medial to lateral. So if we look here, we can see these cranial nerves. So cranial nerves go to the muscles of the face. They also bring information back from the face, also from the sensory organs located inside the head. So let's talk about the cranial nerves. Again, there are 12 pairs. Unlike spinal nerves, which are all mixed, cranial nerves can be all sensory, or they can be all motor, or they can have both sensory and motor fibers. Again, they have both a number and a name. The names are not very easy for some people, and so a mnemonic helps. And so here's a mnemonic, which is very nice, because this mnemonic, the first two and sometimes even the first three letters match the name of the cranial nerve. So this mnemonic is Old Oprah's Occupation, Tropical Trips Aboard Famous Vessels, Glamorous Vacations, Accumulating Hype. This table shows the nerve and then it shows whether it has sensory or motor function or both. Let's look at cranial nerve number one. So cranial nerve number one is the olfactory cranial nerve. And what it does is it carries your sense of smell. It starts in the olfactory epithelium of the nasal cavity. It passes through the olfactory foramen, through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone, and then it attaches at the olfactory bulb. All it does is carry your sense of smell, so it's purely sensory. Here you can see that cranial nerve and its beginning. It's not one nerve, it's actually a bunch of very small nerves. Let's look at cranial nerve number two. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve. And the optic nerve starts in the retina of the eye, it passes through the optic canals, it converges to form sort of an X shape called the optic chiasma, and then it carries the information then back to the brain. All it does is carry your sense of sight, your sense of vision, and so it's purely sensory. Here you can see the optic nerve, the optic chiasma, and the optic tracts. And then again, they're going to go back to the visual cortex. If you look in this picture, you'll see something interesting. Some of the fibers from the retina cross over. They decusate. They happen in the chiasma. But some of the fibers do not decusate. They re remain on the same side. The ones that decusate are the medial fibers, the nasal part of your view. The ones that do not decusate are the lateral ones on the temporal part of the view. Cranial nerve number three is called the oculomotor. It starts in the midbrain. It passes through the superior orbital fissure, the sphenoid bone. Look at the name, it's oculomotor, and this is purely a motor nerve. It goes to four of the six eyeball muscles. 
and it does a bunch of things. It helps you to raise your eyelid, it helps you to move your eyeball around, but it also does some other things inside the eye. It helps you to constrict the iris so that the pupil gets smaller. It also controls the size and shape of your lens. And so when you look at this picture, you can see these six eyeball muscles. They're red. They move the eyeball around. Four of these are controlled by the oculomotor. Let's look at cranial nerve number four. Cranial nerve number four is called the trochlear nerve. It also comes off of the midbrain. It also passes through the superior orbital fissure and it goes to one of those six eyeball muscles. The word trochlea means pulley. And if you look at this eyeball muscle, it's sort of on a pulley. Remember the superior oblique muscle. And when we saw it on the model, we couldn't actually see the muscle itself because it had been cut away. And you can see this nerve then controls that. When you contract this muscle, it pulls the eyeball in sort of a diagonal direction. Look at cranial nerve number five. This is called the trigeminal nerve. And if you look at the first three letters of this tri, it's called that because it has three branches to it. There's an ophthalmic branch, which passes through the superior orbital fissure. There's a maxillary branch, which passes through the foramen rotundum. And there's a mandibular branch, which passes through the foramen ovale. What it's going to do is it's going to transmit all of the sensory information from your face. So the area around the eyes is on the ophthalmic branch. The area around the nose and upper lip is the maxillary branch. The area around the lower lip and chin is the mandibular branch and then it's going to connect to the pons. Here you can see those three branches. This is a nerve that has both sensory and motor fibers. Here you can see the areas of the face for each of those branches. Let's look at cranial nerve number six. Cranial nerve number six is the abducens, and that word has the same root word as abduct, and that's exactly what it does. The abducens nerve goes from the pons, passes through the superior orbital fissure, and goes to that last eyeball muscle. And when this muscle contracts, we abduct the eye. Well, think about abduction, what it means. It means to move away from the large mass. And so when you abduct the eye, you cut the eye to sort of the, the side. And so if you look to the right with your right eye, that's abduction. If you look to the left with your left eye, that's abduction. You can see it here. Cranial nerve number seven is called the facial nerve. This is also a mixed nerve. And what it does is it goes to all of the muscles of the face and scalp. So every single muscle is controlled by this in your face. Now it also gives you some other sensations like pressure and it also has something to do with taste. So it's a mixed nerve. It comes off of the pons, it passes through the stylomastoid foramen, and it looks like this. Well, remember the trigeminal had three branches. The facial nerve has five branches, and the five branches are just named for the area of the face through which is they're innervated. Here are those branches. An easy way to remember these is to just put your fingers, your hand, on the side of your face like this. Everywhere there's a finger, that's a branch. 
So if you put your left hand on the left side of your face, your little finger will be up near the temple. So that's the temporal area. Your ring finger will be across your cheekbone. That's the zygomatic. Your middle finger will be across your cheek. That's the buckle. Your index finger will be along your chin. That's the mandibular. And your thumb will be down at your neck. That's the cervical area. If you damage this nerve, you lose the ability to contract those muscles. Sometimes this nerve can become infected or it can become inflamed and you get something called Bell's palsy. So Bell's palsy is usually temporary uh, paralysis of the face. It only happens on one side. This person has Bell's palsy and if you look at the left side and the right side, look, they don't look the same. The lip sags, the face sags, you're unable to close your eyelid, things like that. Let's look at cranial nerve number eight. This is the vestibulocochlear nerve. This nerve has two branches. It has a vestibular branch, which has to do with balance and position and movement. And it has a cochlear branch, which monitors hearing. So this comes from the inner ear. It goes through the internal auditory meatus and it connects to the pons. It is a purely sensory nerve. So if you look inside the ear, to the far left of this picture, you can see the eardrum, the tympanic membrane. And then you'll see three tiny little bones. We learned these already. That's the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And then you'll see the inner ear. And when you look in the inner ear, you see two structures. One is sort of shaped like a seashell or a snail. That's called the cochlea. And that is where hearing takes place. One looks like it has sort of three sort of half circles or half hula hoops. Those are the semicircular canals and then the vestibule. And the nerve comes off this vestibule. That's the vestibular branch. Together they form the vestibulocochlear nerve. Let's look at cranial nerve number nine. This is called the glossopharyngeal nerve. Glosso means tongue and pharynx means throat. And that's exactly what it does. It controls this, the action of swallowing. So when you get ready to swallow something, your tongue pushes the foodstuffs to the back of the throat and the throat contracts then and pushes it into the esophagus. So this comes off of the medulla. It passes through the jugular foramen. It's a mixed nerve, which means it has both fibers. You can see it here. Again, tongue and throat, and has to do with swallowing. Cranial nerve number 10 is called the vagus. It's not spelled like Las Vegas, though. It's spelled like vagabond. Vag means to travel. And this nerve travels. This nerve comes off of the medulla, passes through the jugular foramen, but then it goes into lots and lots and lots of internal organs. If you look at this picture, you can see it goes to the heart, the lungs, the stomach, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the small intestine, large intestine, all the way down even to the bladder. It is a very, very long nerve. It's also a nerve you cannot live without. Cranial nerve number 11 is called the accessory nerve. A while back, it was called the spinal accessory, but the word spinal has been dropped. The spinal accessory nerve or accessory nerve comes off of the medulla, passes through the jugular foramen, and then it goes to the muscles around the neck. It has to do with swallowing, has to do with um, controlling the movements of your 
your pectoral girdle, turning your head from side to side, and so on. And so when you look at it, it's an odd nerve because it has two roots. In other words, one part comes off the brain, but a second part comes off the spinal cord. They join together to form the nerve, and then the nerve goes to all those skeletal muscles. The only place this goes is to skeletal muscles, and so this is just a motor nerve. Cranial nerve 12 is called the hypoglossal nerve. Remember, hypo means below or beneath. Glosso means tongue. And so this goes to the base of the tongue and beneath the tongue and so on. It comes off of the medulla. It passes through the hypoglossal canals and goes to the tongue. And this is the nerve that we use during speech. So those are the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And so you should be able to look at these nerves. You should be able to name them. And you should be able to have some idea of what they do. So there is going to be in the assignments folder a handout to help you to learn these cranial nerves. And everything you need to know about the cranial nerves will be on that handout. Of course, you can also use your lab book and your textbook.